Uh, could you tell us about uh, uh, your institute and how it goes around and what is your function here? And these Christian oriented studies go back to the um, early 16th century, to exactly 1517, um, and in the tradition of Erasmus of Rotterdam, when the first Collegium Trilingue with Greek, Hebraic, isn't it, and um, um, Greek, Hebraic, and also Syriac studies was created. So our institute, Oriental Studies here in Levanganerf, is in this tradition of the old Collegium Trilingue founded by Erasmus of Rotterdam. When the university was separated in the late 60s, in the French and in the Flemish part, the Oriental Studies devoted to Christian, to Christianity in the Orient, came into its whole part here to Levanganerf. That's why we have here now a quite, um, a quite profound, extensive studies on Oriental Christianity. So we are teaching Coptic, we are teaching Armenian, Georgian, Syriac, Old Slavonic studies, mm, Adania. So uh, let's say, except Ethiopic studies, which are here min, uh, not so quite uh, well um, um, explored, we have all these Christian Oriental languages and cultural traditions here in this institute. And um, in what sense is uh, th those studies are connected with uh, theology uh, and some insights? Yeah, this is a very good question. Philological tradition is much more developed here than the theological tradition, because we are here at the uh, Faculty of Philology and Literature and that ought not at the Faculty of Theology. But, of course, students from theology coming here to learn Aramaic, Syriac, Armenian. Students from art history are coming, from neighbor, from, yeah, from disciplines which are in the neighborhood of Oriental Studies are coming. Yeah. Um, professor, um, as compared to the classical the Greek and Latin studies, where uh, the studies uh, are almost exhausted. Some, sometimes people say that uh, all the texts are found and so much studied. The Oriental uh, Grecian uh, uh, texts are uh, enormous, uh, enormous collection, which is actually n not uh, enough studied. Yeah, you're right, indeed. In, in, um in comparison to Greek and Latin patristic studies, uh, the Oriental studies uh, of the patri of the fathers of the Oriental churches are quite quite less developed. But I think we should not deplore anymore. Um, since I began to study Orientalism, it's now 30 years ago. I think uh, much has been done now, and we have a quite good now basis of text than we had ever before. Thanks, as I told you, to this Corpus Scriptorum, which is the, mm, the, uh, the uh, topic and the uh, aim of this is serious to make worldwide known in translation and in very critical editions the fathers and the authors of Oriental Christian churches. And so I think um, it's quite, quite better than in the 19th and early 20th century, the situation. The situation is also now very good what concerns manuscript studies. I give you another example. This is a, a book uh, done by my colleague Bernard Couli, who is doing a, a repertorium of all the Armenian catalogues. And I myself, I'm working on the uh, um, repertorium of um, Syriac manuscripts. Mm -hmm. uh, so also this one, uh, let's say the, the accumulation or the gathering of all informations of manuscript depositories worldwide, especially in the Orient, are now much better um, in our um, disp disposition than it has been uh, still some, some decennies before. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, much has to be done, but I think this is also the interest point in our studies. We are not 
overwhelmed by uh, secondary studies. Our students, for example, when they are doing a master studies or even then for a doctorate, they really can work on original texts which have not seen before, not edited before, and they do a really basic work. And this is quite adventurous and people like it. I think there are um, two ways of, to make known um, Christian oriented, the richness of Christian oriented Christianity, Christian orient. The first one is to make known to normal people who have not any idea of oriental languages by translation to make known to them some spiritual authors. For example, in the last years much attention had been put to Isaac of Nineveh, this very um, famous and deep um, mystical author of Qatar, so based Katra in Syria, but this is actually the Arabic Emirate of Qatar. And he was living there in the seventh century and he was writing deep mystical uh, treatises which have been now rediscovered. And also here again, Luvang, we are, have been published uh, a Greek version of his homilies. Recently, my doctorand Tamara Pateritze was working on the Georgian version. Sebastian Vork was uh, publishing Syriac versions of this author who is very interesting because as on the one side he was called Nestorian, or now we don't speak uh, not at all uh, about Nestorian church, but we say it's in the Neuterel, it's the church of the East. Uh, but he was, as you know, condemned by so many people. Mm -hmm. uh, because he was an historian, but by, uh, by the way of pseudonymy, he was nevertheless accepted in the Orthodox Church as Russian, as Greek churches, in the Oriental Churches as Syriac, as Armenian, as Georgian. So it is very interesting what happens with some authors who nevertheless, of, despite of dogmatic, dogmatic um, opposition, they had been accepted. And this is for example, one of the last, um, last achievements in Oriental Studies for, let's say, for more li um, like um, for normal lectures. Could you tell us a little bit more about what is done and how it is done in Russia about that? And perhaps, perhaps your, the relationships of your institute with those institutions you mentioned. We have no relations, no, let's say, institutional relations with uh, Russia. So um, I really would like to have much more um, relationship, and it's a little bit a pity that students cannot come in the cadre, in the, in the context of the Erasmus exchange program, which we have in Europe for European universities, where students from other universities can come here uh, for one semester. So I really would like to develop that. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And because I think, yeah, you have uh, also very uh, rich uh, depositories of manuscripts which should be explored. Mm? Mm. Mm. Armenian, Georgian, Syriac manuscripts mm? to work about. But for the moment, not, nothing uh, official has been established between our, our institutes. Do you think there is future for that? Uh, of course, of course. Because it must, but of course, there must be done a, a functional, institutional um, context. Mm? has to be established first so that students, because it's too expensive, if they would like to come on their own money, it will not happen. So there must be, maybe we have just to ask, could, uh, if Moscow cannot be introduced or St. Petersburg cannot, can, can be introduced in this um, European Erasmus program, then it would be quite more easier. Yeah. And as is with you, you see former students then, they come into, after their studies, they will take some, have some certain positions and this kind of relationship will continue then after the studies. What is the future of Oriental Christian studies? What do you think uh, will be the ways how it will uh, go on and what be perhaps your ideas would, would be for that and what kind of insights can happen in the future? Yeah, well, this is a quite critical question and I must say I'm quite negative to answer. I must say the truth. Um, Christian oriented studies are not at all dis um, supported anymore uh, by the government, by the research foundations. They are quite marginalized. Uh, I, I'm a German, as you might hear by my accent. As I come from Germany, I see also the situation in Germany, which has still 20 years ago several universities where Christian orientalism was taught and now there's only one left. And also this one is now in danger. Uh, to be um, to have a succession there, 
And uh, okay, Belgium is a small country, so we have we are still quite well uh, developed here, but it could be better. And my personal opinion, if I might dare to say, is that of course we live now in a um, laicistic society, and Christian Christianity in general here in Europe is more and more put aside. And uh, and when you say you are doing Christian oriented studies, the fact that you are doing something with Christian, nobody is any more interested in it. I think the, the term Christian is not well seen anymore. It does not seem attractive at all, sexy, let's say that. So people now, they ask what, what is the benefit? What are the, what are the political or implications or the social implications? For example, Islam style is now quite up to date. And they can do a lot because we have now the here to face the situation that more and more Muslims become co-citizens in European countries and towns. And so we must see how both cultural traditions can uh, compete and can come together. But um, the, Christian Orient, uh, the Christ Christians from the Orient that are quite well adapted here in our cities and um, they don't make problems. So they have their churches, but um, I don't think so that so many are interested anymore in Christian Oriental Studies. Professor, thank you so much for this interview. And uh, it was, we value so much, and then I think it would give a lot of insights for, for the people in Russia. Yeah, I hope so, and maybe this interview can help the students become interested also in Russia to go into this very rich heritage of Oriental Studies. Absolutely, and you pointed it out precisely.